In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn about magnetic circuits, wherein we will learn what is magnetism, laws of magnetism, magnetic field, lines of force, and different terminologies like magnetic flux, magnetic flux density, magnetic field strength, reluctance, and permeability. When we rotate a magnet around the iron pieces, they get attracted towards the magnet and stick to it at the two ends. These two ends are called as the poles of the magnet, namely the north pole and the south pole. Even if we cut a piece of a magnet into two pieces, every piece again will have its own north and south pole. The phenomenon due to which a magnet can induce the magnetism in a piece of magnetic material placed near it without the physical contact is called as magnetic induction. That is, when the magnet is brought near the iron pieces, it induces the magnetism and pieces get attracted towards the magnet. Let's study the laws of magnetism. The first law states that the like poles of a magnet always repel each other and unlike poles always attract each other. The second law is Coulomb's law. It states that force exerted by one pole on the other pole is directly proportional to the product of the pole strengths, inversely proportional to the distance between them and also depends on the nature of the medium surrounding the poles. The region around the magnet within which the influence of the magnet can be experienced is called as magnetic field. The span within which the iron pieces get attracted towards the magnet is nothing but the magnetic field for that magnet. The magnetic field of a magnet is represented by imaginary lines around it, which are called as magnetic lines of force. As they don't exist physically, we call them as imaginary lines. The properties of lines of force are, the direction of the lines of force is always from the north pole to the south pole, external to the magnet. Lines of force always form a closed loop. They trace the path from the north pole to the south pole externally and the south pole to the north pole internally. Lines of force never intersect each other. The lines of force which are parallel and traveling in the same direction always repel each other. Lines of force always prefer a path offering less opposition. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Let's move forward to study the common terminologies related to magnetic circuits. The first term is magnetic flux. The total number of lines of force existing in a particular magnetic field is called as magnetic flux. It is denoted by the symbol phi and its unit is Weber. One Weber is equal 10 rays to 8 lines of force. The next term is flux density. It is defined as the flux per unit area in the plane at right angles to the flux. Consider a plane perpendicular to the lines of force. The amount of flux present in that plane to the area of that plane gives the flux density, which is denoted by B, and its unit is Weber per meter square. The third term is magnetic field strength. The force experienced by a unit N pole when placed at any point in a magnetic field is known as magnetic field strength at that point. It is denoted by H and its unit is Newton per Weber or Ampere per Weber. Let's take an example now. A pole having strength of 0 0.75 into 10 raised to minus 3 Weber is placed in a magnetic field at a distance of 30 centimeters from another pole. It is experiencing the force of 0 0.75 Newton. Assume constant of medium equals 1 upon 36 pi square into 10 raised to minus 7. Determine magnetic field, strength at the point, strength of the other pole and the distance at which the force experienced will be doubled. We have strength of one pole equals M1 equals 0 0.75 into 10 raised to minus 3. Distance between two poles D equals 30 centimeters. Force F equals 0 0.75 Newton. And constant K 
equals 28144.773. We have to find the magnetic strength at a point, the strength of the second pole and the distance at which the force experienced will be doubled. For that, we use the following formulae. We first find the magnetic field strength. It is given as the ratio of force experienced to the pole strength and comes out to be 1000 newtons per Weber. To find the strength of a second pole, we use Coulomb's law. Substituting the given values into the formula, we get the strength of second pole as M2 equals 4.12 into 10 raised to minus 3 Weber. Now, the force is doubled. Using the same formula again and substituting the new value of force, we get the distance D equals 24 centimeters. Thus, at a distance of 24 centimeters, the force experienced will be doubled. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. The fourth term that we will study is permeability. It is defined as the ability or ease with which the magnetic material forces the magnetic flux to flow through a given medium. For any magnetic material, there are two permeabilities absolute permeability and relative permeability. The ratio of magnetic flux density in a particular medium other than vacuum or air to the magnetic field strength producing that flux density is called as the absolute permeability of that medium. It is denoted by mu and is given as mu equals B by H. The unit of permeability is Henry per meter. When the magnet is placed in a free space or in air, the permeability is called as the permeability of a free space given by mu zero. It has a constant value is equal to 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7. The second type is relative permeability. It is defined as the ratio of flux density produced in a medium to the flux density produced in a free space under the influence of same magnetic field strength. It is given by mu r equals b upon b0. It's a unit less quantity. Writing the equations for the respective permeabilities of two mediums we get b equals mu into h and b0 equals mu0 into h. Substituting these equations in the formula for relative permeability, we get mu equals mu r into mu0. The last term we study is reluctance. As the resistance is the opposition offered to the flow of current, the opposition offered to the flow of the flux is called as reluctance. It is denoted by S and is given as S proportional to L upon A, where L equals length of a circuit and A equals area of cross section. Thus, finally, S equals L upon mu zero into mu r into A. Let's have a quick review. The two ends of a magnet to which iron filing stick are called as the poles of the magnet, namely North Pole and South Pole. When broken down into pieces, every individual piece of a magnet possesses a North and a South Pole. The phenomenon due to which a magnet can induce the magnetism in a piece of magnetic material placed near it without the physical contact is called as magnetic induction. The imaginary lines used to represent the magnetic field are called as magnetic lines of force. The total number of lines of force existing in a particular magnetic field is called as magnetic flux. Permeability is defined as the ability or ease with which the magnetic material forces the magnetic flux to flow through a given medium. For any magnetic material, there are two permeabilities, absolute permeability and relative permeability. The permeability of a free space is always constant. The opposition offered to the flow of the flux is called as reluctance. It is proportional to the length upon area. It is also represented in terms of permeability.